Hi everyone and welcome back. Welcome to my playlist Uber Eats Clone App. And uh, since last couple of videos, we are working on the admin dashboard app. So here I just try to lay down the architecture like okay, what all different components we are going to have because uh, we are doing a dashboard admin app and there we are going to create a restaurant, create a dish menu items. So we also need some mechanism to upload a files. So we are we already consuming the restaurant service and user auth service for the authentication for creating the restaurant and creating dish menu items. We are uh, using the restaurant service. Now, let's say I wanted to create a restaurant, but a restaurant contains a restaurant thumbnails, some logo image, some banner image and all. And I need to find a way to store that. So there are different ways. Either you can do an in-memory storage or something like that. But here we are going to use another service and if you see the structure it's look like simple from the next js client side pages client side pages we are going to hit uh, next js api routes those next js api routes will call the restaurant service endpoint through the proxy gateway so the, you are not going to hit directly the local host 3003 of restaurant service you, we are going to hit the proxy gateway endpoint from the next js api backend okay now the another important thing is how we are going to manage the files okay there are different uh, ways to store the files there are third party vendors same as s3 or azure blob which are very cheap and be very easy to integrate otherwise you can just stick to s3 aws s3 or azure blob for uh, document or object store here we have lots of uh, images which end user will be which restaurant admin will be uploading like the restaurant logo restaurant binary image for dish menu items you will be uploading multiple images okay this is the the final food uh, looks like the paneer tikka or some uh, you will be putting three to four banner images about that dish menu item so we are going to have a separate uh, file manager service that is going to manage all the uploads which you are doing through the next JS UI pages so it's like a same as a file chooser uh, in the form that will send a request okay this is my file just upload it or give me the upload URL final upload URL because these are going to be the public images so there are two type of store one is the public image one is the private logos private images or private files private files you cannot download until unless your session exists public files you can just access the link and uh, you can you can just see the image so these are like the public bucket where we are going to allow user to access the objects from the bucket we are not going to block the access and we are going to write to this s3 bucket through programmatically okay it's not like it's public and anybody can come and start using it you need to have a AWS uh, access client ID and uh, client secret right through that only programmatic APIs you can upload the image so there are there are two different ways I will say one is you just create upload API in this file manager service and hit the upload upload API through the next JS API right so because the front end request is coming to the next JS APIs next JS API will hit the proxy gateway of the file manager service and then you will do the upload and that will give you the URL in the response or there are different ways you can get a signed URL from the APIs there can be another uh, API like API v1 file signed URL that will give you a signed URL based on the file name and will generate a unique file name with the UUID prefix and give you the signed URL and then from the front end from the UI client you can do the put request to that URL and do the upload so this is I mean <laughs> this is a really a easy way to do the upload instead of okay sending the request to the next JS API is now next JS API needs to send the same request object to the proxy gateway because that request contains the multi-part form data right that's a file which we are forwarding to the file manager service so what we can do is we can just get this signed URL which AWS uh, S3 APIs provides you can just generate a signed URL which is nothing but a long AWS URL and from the front end because that URL is you you are able to access that URL because you have access 
AWS client ID and a secret, right? Access key and secret. Using that only you have generated a uh, signed URL. So signed URL is already available. That has an expiry. You have to just use the signed URL immediately and upload the file using just a put to that URL with the file. So that is simplest approach. You don't need any authentication, authorization or anything. If you have a signed URL, you do the put and your file will be on S3 and you will have a URL uh, as a signed URL. Okay. So this is how you will get the unique URL, I mean the public URL of that image, which is going to be stored into the S3 bucket. And then that URL you can store in your database because that is a public URL. And any, whenever you try to put image source equal to that URL, image SRCA and uh, that URL, that URL will give you the banner image, the logo image, the thumbnails of the food menu items, all those things will happen. But we need a separate service because uh, this file upload or file manager service can be used at many different places to upload a file. Okay. And then uh, we also, because we are going to store these file records in the Dynamo also. Now, till now we are using Postgres and all. Let's, uh, what I will do is I will expand this to a different horizon. Once this stack is ready, we are going to use AWS CDK to just deploy this file manager service and notification service. And then, we will have this application as a Lambda running on AWS platform. Okay, so uh, this is pretty much we have on this uh, architecture now. Next thing we are going to have is, we are also planning to have authentication service. We already have. Then another is an email notification service. I mean, this is just to give you a, a, a sense of uh, microservices which you can have. File upload manager, we can do with the next is 13.x. Then there are two different type of communications we, we always want. Let's say I wanted to send an email. So what you can do is from the restaurant service, once the restaurant is created, I can just send an email to the owner. Okay, your restaurant has been successfully onboarded. Now we can start onboarding the food menu items. So that is a synchronous communication. You can just hit a HTTP endpoint of uh, email notification service. That is a purely synchronous one to one. And that's a blocking because until unless that communication is not done, you won't be sending the response or Nest.js provides an event emitter. So you return the response to the UI after the restaurant is created. And then you can use the Nest.js events to emit the event. It is same as the Node.js events. And then that event handler will call this service asynchronously just using HTTP. But I mean the success and failure of that call is not going to block your response for the restaurant create API. So that's fine. But that's a typical way of communication. You don't even have a track. Okay, if your uh, uh, event has been handled properly or uh, notification has been sent properly or not. So in the, the future videos, we will find a technique to do it. There are many ways. One is like uh, you can have a, you can use a RabbitMQ and then uh, you can, uh, you can just send these events to RabbitMQ and then there can be a listener service like email notification can be a RabbitMQ listener to a particular broker and based on the event name and the payload because event contains the event name and the payload based on the payload, you will send email notification or you can use AWS managed infra and these individual services can send the events to the SNS topic and then these are the listener services like email uh, notification service, order dispatch service or uh, your order order tracking service. What they will be interested in? They will be interested in, okay, these events like a uh, restaurant created. So I just need to send a notification event to the particular email. Order placed. So in that case, we just need to notify that, okay, order has been placed. Start assigning uh, a, a delivery partner to that particular order who is available in the nearby vicinity, right? So these all things will be available. So if we do it without the AWS or cloud environment, we can just use a uh, RabbitMQ or uh, any simplest solution, which provides just a queuing mechanism where you can just send an event and those events can be handled by the listener services. They can record the event also. Okay, this event has been arrived and this is how that gets processed. All those things can be done otherwise we can just use sns topics and uh, 
the only thing is once we are close to somewhat uh, 50 to 60 percent of the app i will start putting things on aws so that we can orchestrate this end-to-end -end communication there now next thing is we are going to use this package because we are doing a front end and there is an important aspect of doing a mono repo is is we can expose the types from the back end i mean i can have a separate package there is a package like types and i can put all my types restaurant restaurant menu food menu items food type okay uh food type restaurant type all the types which same types i need to use at the front end i don't uh, because there is a interface between front end and back end that is an api and these are rest apis so we know what needs to be sent in the payload and what we will receive in the response so we can define the the same types and these types can be consumed by your next js uh, ui components i mean server side pages or uh, client side components they can just import this uh eats and types and uh, you can just add the dependency you can see here this is the dto so i will just copy the entity that contains the types okay what uh, the restaurant contains the name description maybe a thumbnail banner delivery options uh, pickup options open set closes at and uh, what type of restaurant it is is it providing all type of uh, different meals what is the address of the restaurant so we can copy all those things from the entity or uh, from the dto so if i copy it from the entity these are the different properties so i'm just creating a type either you can expose this these kind of entity classes also but i wanted to have a separate interface showcasing okay what is required what is optional and then i will start removing things from that so this is the interface we have and here i will just try to get this clean by removing unnecessary things so this is our interface like restaurant interface and this restaurant interface we are going to expose to the ui component how we can do it we already have this package i mean this package uh, each types and this package can be used by uh, any any other app project how we can do it because you can just build this uh, package and then <clears throat> add the dependency of this each types in your restaurant admin so here uh, i will be using nx console to build this and then i will add the dependency in the the restaurant dashboard app so each types is already there and i will just do pnpm install at the root so this dependency will be available there and i'm just doing npm run build and you can see it is building and it is showing that build building a one dependency win one dependent package because it has a dependency on each types and if i go to the node modules and try to see then i would be able to see that and here i can start importing that each types like import restaurant from uh, i mean i have already explained this when we are using mono repo how to how to write a package which is nothing but a simple javascript type script package and whatever the types and interface it is exposing we can use it by adding as a dependency so i did pnpm install so that this dependency is clearly available okay it's each type restaurant and then i can just see in the node modules there should be uh, eats inside eats we have a types and this is second folder after bin you can see there is a eats types and uh, all these things gets imported here i mean added in the node modules this is how you will get the dependency resolution because i added as a dependency when you do npm install that particular module or a package also gets added in the node modules so that is the beauty of um, you can say mono repo because we have front end back end we already have these package types which provides a common interface okay these are the attributes you need to create a restaurant or uh, all these different operations now we will start creating that apis because our next js client components are going to call okay give me all the restaurant give me this particular restaurant by id i wanted to delete this restaurant i wanted to update this restaurant i wanted to create a brand new restaurant all for all these we need to have an api available so i'm just creating a api files restaurant restaurant id and this restaurant id is actually nothing but uh, destructured because 
I want I want some APIs which are dealing with the restaurant ID and doing update, delete, or uh, give the detail of the restaurant by restaurant ID. So here we have created uh, all these restaurant and restaurant ID, these uh, two components. So here we need to make sure that we are putting the proper file name. I mean inside restaurant I'm putting routes.ts and then inside restaurant there is an ID and then I'm putting route.ts inside it. So restaurant when you hit the API restaurant it will execute route.ts inside a restaurant. When you hit API v1 restaurant forward slash some ID then it is going to use the route.ts inside, uh, inside ID folder because that is the slug we have added here and I wanted to access the ID from the slug. Because when it comes to the page based routing, it's totally different than the API based routing. Here we are doing everything inside the API folder and creating this folder that that will become the routes. And here we can define a get, put, post, patch, delete, all these different different methods. So here this slug, uh, we are uh, this getting the ID as a slug and uh, you can see here if I'm passing this. And then if I'm passing some variable, then it will become hello because that is the get restaurant by ID. This is the get restaurant by ID API. And here we can define uh, put delete and in the restaurant, we can define the post and get because I wanted to get all the restaurant. I wanted to create a new restaurant. So we can have a get and post methods inside uh, the restaurant and then the restaurant by ID. They can have their put and delete or whatever the methods we wanted to have. So this is pretty much I wanted to talk about in this video. In the next video, we will deep dive more about end-to-end -end flow, how we are accessing the how we are accessing the auth token and how we are able to call the restaurant APIs, get by ID, restaurant, list all, create restaurant from the next JS API routes.